I've made several videos about circles, and this January, I'm adding to that list. Today, we'll use JavaScript and HTML canvas to draw the Twitter logo. Did you know it's made out of circles? Not that one. That's just the one of the math symbol. I mean the bird logo. It's entirely made out of circles, and I thought it'd be a nice beginner coding project to play around with the coordinate system and the drawing functions. But on second thought, those are a lot of circles, and it can be really tedious to figure out parameters for all of them. So here's a new plan. Let's make a simple drawing app that specializes in drawing circles like that. It's going to be a bit more involved, but we'll also study event listeners and global composite operations, essentially hitting many birds with one small coding project. Get it? Because the Twitter logo used to be a banana. Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Let's code now. I'm going to be coding using Visual Studio Code. And in an empty folder, let's create index.html. And now let's type basic HTML, the doc type, and then the HTML opening and closing tag. And in the head, let's add the title for our page, Twitter bird logo. Not the new logo, the one that actually looked like a logo. So in the body, I'm going to add the canvas element and that's what we're going to use to draw it. Let's save this and open our index.html file in a browser to test. I'm using Google Chrome and you can see the title appearing in the top, but the canvas is not really visible unless you open the developer tools and then you can see it here, part of the body. It's just transparent. So let's change that a little bit and um, add styling to our page. So I'm going to do that in a separate file, style.css. And you can create this file by control clicking in Visual Studio Code. It's going to make it appear here next to the HTML file. Let's add a border to our canvas and let's have it solid border. It defaults to black. So refreshing gives us this and it's visible now, but I want this canvas to be bigger to cover the, the whole screen here. And don't do that in CSS. I mean, you could assign here width and height to this element and it's going to stretch it to any size you want. But if you do that, it's just going to do that. It's going to stretch it it's still going to be a 300 by 150 size canvas internally. And that's going to affect very much how things look like in the end. To do this properly, you set the canvas size in index.html here after you define the canvas element. So not as CSS, but specifying these attributes to the canvas element itself. If you refresh, it's going to now cover this size. And you can use any size really, but this 700 by 700 looks good on my screen. We'll also need to address this canvas somehow in JavaScript. So I'm going to give it an ID my canvas, like so. And the JavaScript code, I'm going to implement it in a separate file, main.js. We can also create this file by control clicking in Visual Studio Code. Now, it's possible to draw this by just playing around with the math and fixing the coordinates and trying different radii and so on. But it's going to be a lot of work and very tedious. It's actually faster to implement a simple tool for drawing logos like this that are based on circles. And then we can use that tool to create other logo designs as well. So let's try to do that. 
Of course, it's possible to use other software to draw things like this, but this tool will be specialized to draw circle-based logos. So it's probably going to be more efficient to use this one than anything else, really. I don't know. Let's see. Now, I'm going to add an event listener for pointer down. When we click, we create a circle. Simple as that. And I'm going to begin a path. And arc at the location coming from the event offset x and y let's say uh, 50 radius for the circle and starting at zero going all the way to 360 degrees or 2 pi radians and now let's fill this like so if i'm going to save this and refresh and now clicking somewhere makes a circle appear but I want this radius to change somehow. We need control over it. And we're going to use the mouse wheel to change this radius. So let's prepare here radius. And this will be a global variable here at the top. And to change this value, we are going to add an event listener for the wheel, like that. And let's just log this event. Save and refresh. And if you scroll up and open the console, you're going to get some wheel events appearing here. And the important thing that we'll look at is this delta y value. You see it's negative because I was scrolling up. And if I scroll down, it's going to be a positive value. So down is positive, up is negative. I want my radius to increase when I scroll up and decrease when I scroll down. So I'm going to do a flip of the sign of this delta y. Like this. Let's remove the log and say radius minus equals the sign of this delta y. Save. Refresh. And I'm going to click here. And now I'm going to scroll down a few times and click. And you can see it's smaller. And if I scroll up many times, it's bigger. But I don't really know what size circle I'm going to get when, when I click somewhere. It's kind of a surprise and this is not good. We need to have an idea what that size is. So I'm going to add the kind of overlay over the canvas that tells us what size to expect. And instead of implementing here some animation loop and clearing the canvas, doing those kind of things, it's easier to go back in the HTML and use a div for the overlay. So I'm going to add a div with an ID circle, like so, and the overlay will be uh, a circle on top of the canvas that follows the mouse. We'll need to style this by the ID. So in style CSS, we'll access the circle by the ID. So we use here this hashtag symbol. And then let's set a width of 100 pixels. So if the width is 100, it means the radius is 50. So same as in our JavaScript code. And same for the height. And let's have a border one pixel and let's have it dashed so that we, we see it clearly. And to be a circle, we need to set the border radius of 50%. And we will eventually need to move this around to any location. So position absolute. And I don't want this to interfere with me clicking things on the canvas. So I will also set the pointer events to none. Now let's just debug real quick and see what we have. Save, refresh, and here it is at the bottom. It's not following the mouse just yet or changing size, but that's the next step. We're going to implement the function that does that and call it when we change its size. So here, uh, after we change the radius, let's show the intent. 
I'm using this word intent to mean that I, I intend to draw a circle and this visualizes what will happen if I do click. So the client X and client Y are the mouse location here and the radius uh, is the size that we want this to be. And I'm going to implement this function down here, show intent with X, Y and the radius. And we're going to style that circle div. So circle style left is X minus the radius plus pixels. Circle style top is Y minus radius pixels. And now the width and the height width is twice the radius in pixels and height is twice the radius pixels. Let's save and refresh and the circle doesn't move from here unless we use the wheel. So I'm going to use the wheel now and you can see it jumped over where my mouse is and when I'm scrolling the wheel I get to see what is the future size of my circle. So clicking now it fills that, that spot and clicking again it looks like that. But it should also move and move so that I, I see the circle following the mouse here. So I'm going to go back here and say add an event listener for pointer move like this and we show the intent client x client y with the same radius. Let's save and refresh and now you can see it following. Nice. We also need to be able to cut into circles and we can do that with a right click. Let me show you. I'm going to go here in the pointer down event listener and if we are pressing the left click then I'm going to set the fill style to a bluish color kind of like the Twitter logo. Maybe not exactly that, I haven't really looked into it, but some bluish color. And then otherwise, let's just set the fill style to white. So basically painting white on top of this, these blue circles, but only when we, when we right click. Save and refresh. And now when we click, we get this and right click. We cut into that circle, but the reason why that is not following me now is because this context menu appeared. The um, screen recorder I have doesn't catch that. We also need to fix this problem. So let's add an event listener for the context menu so that it doesn't open, it prevents the default behavior there. Now save, refresh, and it does look like I can do things quite nice, but drawing this white on top of the blue doesn't really work well if you plan to export this image someday, somehow. And because it's going to have white circles and then the rest of the thing is going to be transparent. So you might want your logo to have a transparent background and now it's going to have some kind of white circles there that are uh, disturbing it. So the proper way to do this is to work with global composite operations. And what we will do is we will leave the color blue always. But here, in case it's the left click, then we want things to appear normally and the default global composite operation has source over. But otherwise, 
we are going to use destination and out. This means it's going to erase what is underneath the, the circle that we are drawing. Now we save and refresh and it's going to look the same. So right clicking here looks pretty much the same. But if you do plan to implement download functionality for this, then you will have a nice drawing here without the white circles interfering. One thing that I still don't like is that this radius is increasing very slow and sometimes I want to make a big circle and it, it takes forever. Other tools might be faster <laughs> just because of this, um, this problem with the, with the slow increase decrease. So I'm going to go here where we change the value of the radius and multiply this by 10 so that it, it's faster. And also, I don't want this to decrease too much. So maybe let's cap it and give it a minimum value of 10. So the maximum between 10 and whatever radius is here will force it to be 10 if it tries to get below that value. Of course, if you really want to make a professional tool, you might include uh, another hotkey here, like maybe holding shift is going to change it as before by one pixel but without it it's going to be faster so it's up to you to expand on this project now let's save refresh and uh, this feels much faster let's see if i can draw the twitter logo so i'm gonna click here for a big circle like that and um, i need to cut out of it like so for the body and now the wings are here. And um, this is the bottom part. I need to cut this out. And now this other part of the wing. And this top part of the wing. And here I would actually need this part to be filled and use a big circle like that to cut out that shape on the top, I think. Something like this. And now the head. So the head would be actually not the head. Um, the beak. I need to do the beak before I do the head because I will need to cut out from the beak and it will destroy the head. <laughs> um, so let's see. The beak goes like this. And another circle like that. And now I just clean up here a little bit and the head like this. Well, it's not exactly the same, but I think it's pretty nice. And it wasn't very hard to draw, but I would like to have some kind of um, undo, redo functionality maybe. And of course, vectors... Um, Logos like this are typically stored in vector form, so maybe something like how I implemented the um, drawing app in the machine learning course, which, uh, which keeps vector data there. There might be some other operations with circles, like maybe intersection of circles would be nice to have as a feature in an application like this. But let me know, what do you think? Is there potential in something like this? or? Is it just a, a play thing? Thanks for watching and see you guys.